And in this video, we're going to talk about the thermodynamic cycle. A cycle is a series of thermodynamic processes where you start at one point and go through a series of uh, changes of state for the gas and end up in the same place that you started with. So it's a cyclical process. That's why we call it a thermodynamic cycle. And it turns out that the work done in a thermodynamic cycle is simply equal to the area inside this curve. So if you simply calculate the area inside this curve, or inside the cycle, I should say, then we find the work done. But there's also other ways to find the work done, and we'll show you that in just a moment. And especially in the cases where we don't have a neat geometric shape of the cycle, then we'll have to use these other techniques to do so. So first of all, let's say that the work done is equal to the area underneath the curve. And also notice that if the direction of the cycle is clockwise, the work done is positive. If the direction of the cycle is counterclockwise, then the work done will be negative. All right, so the area is equal to the height times the width. And so the height would be equal to the difference between two atmospheres and one atmosphere. So it would be two atmospheres minus one atmosphere that is equal to the height of the rectangle and the width of the rectangle would be the difference between the volume here and the volume there. So you multiply the times um, 60 liters minus 20 liters and that will give you the work done. Now obviously we still have atmospheres and liters there. We want to convert that to pascals and cubic meters. So here we have to have 101,300 300 newtons per square meter divided by atmospheres to convert that and we have to multiply that times uh, 0.001 meters cubed divided by liters and so then the liters cancel out and the atmospheres cancel out and we have proper units so that's always important. Okay so let's calculate that so we have uh, 40 uh, times 101,300 divided by a thousand equals and that's 4052 joules so 4052 joules so that's a fairly straightforward way to find the, the work done and nothing wrong with that method if you can do that every time just go ahead and do that but there's another way we can do that we can also say that the work done the total work done in a cycle is simply the sum of the work done of the four processes that make up the cycle so work done uh, going from one to two plus the work done going from two to three, plus the work done going from three to four, plus the work done going from four back to one, back to the state that we started. Now notice that when we go from one to two and from three to four, the volume doesn't change. So in that case, those two go to zero. So this is zero and this one is zero, which means we only have those two left. So since the work done from two to three is an isobaric process and the work done from four to one is an isobaric process because the pressure doesn't change there we can then say that that is equal to and I'll just keep plugging the zeros in so you know that we didn't forget that it will be the pressure at two times the change in the volume that would be the volume from three minus the volume at two so what I'm doing here to find the work done in this in this part of the process right here uh, or this part of the cycle is I take the pressure at this point and multiply times the difference in the volume, the volume at this point minus the volume at that point. So plus zero for this work done and plus the work done going from four back to one. So the pressure at that point is um, pressure at one, same thing, right? So this is pressure at four, same as pressure at one, times now the change in the volume. It's final volume minus initial volume. So it would be V1 minus V4. You can see already that that's going to be a negative quantity, which means that that's going to be negative work because going from there to there is negative work, going from there to there is positive work. But since this is higher up in the PV diagram, there would be a lot more positive work done than negative work. And then you can see what this is saying is that this is the work done by this cycle, which is this entire area. This is the work done by this area underneath here. You take this entire area minus this area that gives you what's left, what's inside the cycle, which then gives you the same answer as that. So you can see the analogy over here. Plug in the numbers. Uh, P2 is equal to two atmospheres. Multiply times V3, which is uh, 60 liters, minus V2, which is 20 liters, plus the pressure at one, which is one atmosphere, times V1, which is 20 liters, 
uh, 20 liters minus v2, V4, which is 60 liters. So here we get 2 times 40, or this is equal to 80 atmosphere liters. Um, and this is going to be negative quantity minus 40 atmosphere liters, which is equal to 40 atmosphere liters. And of course, then we have to multiply this times 100, 1,300 uh, newtons per square meter per atmosphere and 0 0.001 meter cubed divided by liters. And when we work that one out, it looks like 101, 300 times uh, 40 divided by 1,000 equals, and yes, we get the same, 4,052 joules. All right, so now you can see that is how you find the work done in a thermodynamic cycle. Either you find the area of the, um, of the cycle, or you simply add the work done of each process within the cycle, and then you should get the same answer. What about the heat added to the, uh, the gas? Well, before we do that, let's talk about the change in internal energy of the gas when we do one complete cycle. Each of these cycles, or each of the processes within the cycle, represent this uh, change of state of the gas, but then eventually, if the, the changes are cyclical, you end up in the very same place that you started with. So if you're in the very same place that you started with, same pressure, same volume, therefore also the same temperature, then there's no change in internal energy when you complete a complete cycle. So you can say that for a complete cycle, delta U is always going to be zero, which means if we use the first law of thermodynamics, delta U equals Q minus W, if delta U is equal to zero, we get Q minus W equals zero, or Q equals W. But in other words, the heat added to the gas equals the work done by the gas in a complete circle. So therefore, in this case, Q is also equal to 4,052 joules. And that way, this <coughs> cyclical process can continue. You keep adding heat, you keep doing work, and the process continues. Now, sometimes you will be asked to find the delta U and the delta Q for any particular portion of the cycle, for any particular thermodynamic process, but then you go back to the videos that we did before, you look at the particular process and you go, you do that individually. Uh, but I, here I just wanted to show you what you do with a complete cycle. In the next several videos, I will show you some additional cycles to see how you apply these techniques. And in some cases you will have not a choice, but to go ahead and find the delta U and the Q for individual portions of the cycle as well. And I'll show you how to do that in the future videos. So there's the introduction to a cycle. Stay tuned if you want to see some more videos on that.